Thanks, Dan. We have been appalled at the unethical behaviour of many sporting and political leaders, from the Cape Town sandpaper cricket scandal to the Essendon Football Club supplement scandal, and more recently, that sacking that we've just mentioned, in the most undignified and disrespectful way. More recently, we were horrified by Scott Morrison's underhanded secrecy about his multi-ministerial self-appointments. If our leaders can't behave ethically, how can our young people see it modelled? Joe. Thanks for coming to me for this one, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Politics and sport. <laughs> Look, I think, you know, everything... We, we need to show leadership to our young people. You know, and, and we can't... You know, I'm, I'm in the game of, of, of behaviours, right? And, and, and young people model... Mo young people copy what they see. Right, so if, if we're seeing from our, our leaders of the country, if we're seeing from the leaders of you know, coaching and sporting teams, um, not so great behaviour, how on earth can we expect change with our young people around these types of issues? You know, we, we looked at some of the, the challenges that were mentioned in the last question. Um, you know, these people, let's, let's, let's call it for what it is, you know, sp sport for a lot of these people is a job, one, but they are put on a pedestal and, and behaviours are often under the microscope. So we just have to see and have good leadership modelled by people in, in these leadership positions. Otherwise, our kids and our next generations are just going to follow the same poor behaviours. Is there also a question, David Lakisa, that um, in the case of, of David Warner, there's been some time now since Sandpapergate, that period has been served, if you like. Would you welcome him back into a leadership position as a fan of cricket? Would you want to see that? Nick, that's a great question because it dovetails directly into <laughs> PFAX onto Tim's yeah. question of how many chances, whether it's a second or a third or a fourth opportunity at redemption. But off the back of Joe's comment, uh, Nick, about that unethical behavioural modelling, we live, you know, when we deal with moral, you know, in a, a moral society, we're always going to be let down by one's behaviours and others. Um, and, and, and that's why leadership is so important. But I'm a fan of ensuring leadership starts within the four walls of our own home. You know, it starts with, within, within ourselves, within those we associate with. Um, and being involved in coaching at the junior level, mm. uh, there's such a array of experiences from our young people. I remember one team I was coaching, one was dealing with bullying at school, another one was dealing with the parents being separated, another was, was dealing with, um, uh, you know, with anger issues. And so we've got to be very, very mindful that while we esteem other people in certain roles, albeit leadership, that we've got to be mindful of where we stand as well mm. um, in, in terms of how we want to lead, if that makes sense. Kieran, um, it does come back to this, and you hear this a lot about role modelling. What is the responsibility of an athlete when it comes to, to, to being a good role model? Or is it just to perform? Is it just to go out and play well? Oh, look, I, I, I think personally I, I fall a little bit on Joe's side of that. I, my view is that you are a role model and you have a responsibility. And, and we do hear this in the dialogue a lot. Oh, but, you know, they're just young, they're an athlete, they didn't, you know, they didn't ask for this attention or this, this microscope. Well, what world were you living in where you didn't think that if you became elite and you became an employed member of a um, professional code that there wouldn't be a spotlight on you. Should you be held to a higher account than the Prime Minister, for instance? So, I mean, I know that John Howard said that being Australian <laughs> cricket captain is the second highest honour in, in Australia. But it's been a pretty low bar for a while. <laughs> what, in politics and sport? Or? <laughs> I, I'd, I'd actually put it the other way. I don't think anybody in sport should be held to um, any lesser account than the average person in the country. And, mm. and, and that, that, to me, is where really some of this starts to get a little bit lost along the way, because we do come here tonight and have this conversation as though there is some deification of athletes because they apparently are better, different, mm. I don't know. Um, being one, having been one, I probably should know, but I spent most of my athletic career thinking that I'm just a normal human being and if it's good for one person, it's good for me. I, I think where we then get into trouble, of course, is because your question about, you know, behaviour from other members of mm. uh, the leadership class in the country, well, um, you know, uh, 
let's 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 not hold people to account to a poor example that uh, we we don't agree with it in the get go. Yeah, and Catherine, then there's a question of Tim Payne as well, who's now coming back into cricket and living your life in the glare of publicity. I, I don't. I think probably sports people may even get more scrutiny than politicians. They're always in the public. Um, they're always accessible, and the headlines can be just extraordinary when things go wrong. Yeah, it, that's certainly true. But what I was thinking about when you were speaking, Kieran, apart from the, the fish rots from the head expression, which is your point, Joe, about um, leadership having to um, set the tone for the rest of the organisation, what I was kind of concerned about is that there is this double standard between what we see in some of our sports leaders and what the standards are then applied on the athletes. And we have seen a real disconnect between some of our leaders in sport, in both Olympic sport and in professional sport, frankly, that is not reflected in what the expectations are on athletes. And I think that's really not OK. And perhaps that's what we've also seen in the Tim Payne scenario. Yeah, Hannah, of course, you lived through a, a very public story yourself as well. What's it like to be in the glare of, of that publicity and have your life debated by others? Look, it's, it's strange. Uh, it's very surreal. At the time... Uh... Look, I didn't expect it, and I, I know people will look back and say, how can you not? But I really didn't. And it sort of just happened overnight. So I really didn't probably process it or realise what had happened for three or four years and, until it stopped. Um, but I think, too, it's... I mean, the attention is there, but going back to the, the leadership side of things and it's standing in, starting in the, in the four walls of the home, I actually really think we need to apply that to you know, sporting organisations in this instance and the pressure and the expectations that are applied that are causing people to perhaps, you know, act out in ways they, they wouldn't otherwise. The ball mm. tampering is a, is a perfect example. And, you know, I said it with James Hurd, I think, you know, we need to embrace failure more and accept that people make mistakes more, be they elite athletes or otherwise. Now, mm. there's some things that... You know, you, you probably wouldn't want to give people a second chance. Well, I think David Warner absolutely should because he's going to be a much better player in a leadership position now than he would have been before that from what he learnt. And I think we need to step back and realise that, you know, we can put this glare on people, but if they make mistakes as a result of that because of the pressure that's on them, well, perhaps we need to look at the culture that we're creating that, that's causing all of this. And I think we just need to embrace... When it comes to leadership, we need to embrace failure. Failing's great because you learn from it. I love it in moderated doses, you know. <laughs> but it's the best thing you can do because you come out better for it. So I think, you know, we're very quick as a society to, you know, have one person make one mistake and that's it. And I think that's what we need to get Cancel past. Cancel culture. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.